Hey everybody, Danny Brown here with Myriad Real Estate Group, and it's time for our Q4 uh, market update and our my predictions for 2021. So the year finished up really strong for Arizona real estate. Obviously, as you all know, if you tune into any of my videos, it is a seller's market out there and that hasn't changed at all. So, you know, for us, we finished the year selling 109 homes. Uh, so we were able to successfully help 109 families reach their real estate goals. And like a lot of people in my industry, whether they're in lending or in real estate, had our best year ever. Um, so it was really fantastic. We were able to raise a lot of money for charity. We donated over $22,000 to a couple of different charities that we support. So it was a really good year. Um, you know, when the year started, I was actually terrified because COVID hit, you know, around February and I was really nervous. I had no idea what to expect as I don't think anyone did. I was really nervous that uh, I was going to have to let people go for my team, that my business was going to suffer and potentially even go out of business and that the whole market would just tank. And, you know, fortunately for us in real estate, we were on, we recovered really fast. So a lot of economists have been talking about this K-shaped recovery where certain segments of the market are going up while other segments are going down. So I feel very grateful that we were in part of that segment that is going up and I think is going to continue to go up into 2021. So uh, where are we headed in 2021? Well, I've been having this conversation with a lot of clients because they're asking me this question pretty routinely. And the seasonality for Phoenix is super predictable in that you know the months from January through about June are the spring selling season. So we always see an influx of listings hit the market during that time. And this January is no different. We've actually seen a slight increase in listing activity but the demand for homes is so high that nobody's even recognizing the fact that more listings have hit the market. Currently in the parts of Phoenix that matter, so most of Maricopa County and parts of Pinal County, there's only 4,200 homes for sale. So that's single family homes, town homes, condos, patio homes, 4,200. That is a just a huge lack of inventory and that's really what's driving everything. Uh, a great example is we had a listing that we uh, made live last week on Thursday, and we actually advised our client to move out of their house for the weekend because we thought the, list the uh, activity of showings was gonna be so high. And boy, were we right. We had over 63 showings in that home between Saturday and Sunday, uh, got a ton of offers, sold well above list price, and we did not list it low. That buyer was waiving their appraisal contingency purchasing the property in as-is condition and gave our client the ability to stay in the home for up to 90 days after closing so that we can hopefully find their next home. So you have to imagine if 63 people saw that home, one person got it. So that's 62 other people who are still looking for a home. So that's, that's what you're facing. And I had a, a conversation with a buyer client today who is in need of down payment assistance, which he qualifies for but he also needs the seller to cover his closing costs. And I just told him, look, this isn't a market that you can really participate in right now because there is just no chance that you're gonna get the seller to cover your closing costs. So your best move is to continue to rent and save until you can cover your own costs and then try to buy a house. Um, so you know, for buyers, it's going to be very difficult this year because I don't think that we're gonna see an influx of listings hit the market that's really going to change that. We may see demand go down, which I kind of hope we do, uh, from, from buyers who are just fed up with trying to find a home and decide to rent or stay where they're at for longer. Um, and you know, I do think that we will see an uptick some in that listing activity due to the seasonality. And then I also think that the vaccine will play a large part in that as well. So I think as the vaccine starts to roll out and more people become vaccinated and feel safer, that we will see those people who wanted to sell maybe in 2020 that didn't, uh, I think we'll see them list their home for sale this year, but that could come in third and fourth quarter. Um, so I think that we're in for a long first and second quarter of more of this lack of overall inventory, multiple offers with buyers, sellers really running the show and getting everything they want and buyers having to play a lot of catch up. 
What I don't see happening, and I'm having, again, this conversation with a lot of people, is any sort of bubble popping, because there, there isn't one. This is simply a supply and demand problem. So there's no other economic uh, problems associated with the real estate market. We just have very low supply and very high demand. So what could derail the housing market to cause this to change? Well, a rise in interest rates, that always tempers demand and causes demand to go down. But the Fed has come out and stated that they're not raising rates until at earliest 2023. I do think that we will see mortgage rates go up with the new administration once they take over, but I think that we're gonna be in the low threes for the foreseeable future. Uh, other things that could derail the housing market and change demand uh, would be a change in Phoenix and making Phoenix not a place that people wanna to move to. Once again, Maricopa County is the fastest growing county in the country. We have a ton of Californians relocating from California to Phoenix, uh, and people are moving here. They want to live here. So unless climate change changes that all of a sudden and makes Phoenix an inhospitable place to live, and we start to see people move away from Phoenix rather than come in, I think that uh, that demand for housing is gonna remain high. The other thing that's really driving demand is you have uh, millennials and Gen Z are all in their 30s. So your oldest millennial right now is 39. So we're all in that prime buying stage for a home. These are two of the largest generations in US history and they all want to buy homes. And so I think for a very long time, we are going to have high demand for housing. So some added uh, inventory that could eventually come to the market or something that is kind of stalling the real estate market rather are baby boomers. So baby boomers right now aren't really selling their homes, nor probably should they. Uh, you know, a lot of baby boomers as they age go into retirement communities or assisted living. And those places during COVID have not been the areas that you want to be in, right? So baby boomers have not been motivated to sell their homes to move into those types of facilities. My parents are a prime example. They're living in a 5,000 square foot home in Tempe and they're not selling. It's a house that we kind of grew up in uh, and it's just the two of them. Eventually that house is gonna get too big for them. It's on an acre, it's a great house. I, I love it and hope they never sell, but eventually they will. And I think there's a lot of boomers that uh, are in that similar position as well. So we could see relief once baby boomers start to age up and need to get homes with smaller square footage or finally decide to move into assisted living facilities. So overall for the US economy, I think that there's gonna be a lot of noise coming at us about how terrible the first and second quarter is gonna be for GDP and growth. I think the unemployment rate is gonna remain high in the first and second quarter of this year. But I do think that as that vaccine continues to roll out, and I have to hope that this administration is gonna have their act together better than the previous one, for the rollout of the vaccine, that things are gonna get back to normal. I think that we're gonna see people get back to traveling, entertainment, leisure. I think that those industries are going to skyrocket come third and fourth quarter of this year. I think people are itching to do fun things because they've been so restricted and you're gonna see just a flood of people want to travel as soon as they're allowed to. And I'm also predicting that towards the end of the year that we finished this year with lower with a lower unemployment rate than when we went into the pandemic. So I think we will have uh, a higher GDP, the economy will be in a much better spot, and I think the employment rate will be lower than pre-pandemic le levels. So I think this is the year, late third quarter, early fourth quarter, where the ship writes itself and we get back on track and really start to grow. So try to ignore all the noise of the first and second quarter that comes from the news and focus on the light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting there. I think the third and fourth corner are gonna be banner quarters for the US economy and everybody starts to get back to work and that GDP goes up and that unemployment rate goes down. And finally, if you're a buyer in this market, it's really challenging. Um, like I said, if you're needing the seller to cover your costs, if you don't have additional funds to pay above appraised value to do your own repairs, this is probably a market that you should sit out on. You should probably continue to rent, stay where you're at, save your money, and then get into the market at a future date. It's just way too challenging to overcome those obstacles because there are too many people fighting for homes and you just don't have a chance. Continue to save your money and get to a better spot financially. I believe that all, every individual should have six months worth of reserves set aside before they buy a home. 
I think that you need to be financially stable before you take that leap and you need to have that six months worth of bills set aside, uh, rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it, before you attempt to purchase a home. And you need to be able to cover your own costs. If you're trying to look for things from the seller, they're just not going to give it to you in this market. And if you are a seller, good for you. It's a great time to sell. You're getting top dollar. People want your home. It's not necessarily about getting the highest offer for your home because it still needs to appraise. So make sure that the agent that you're working with is negotiating on your behalf and asking those questions up front of the buyers. You know, again, to go back to our listing that we had this weekend in Gilbert, we had uh, we had offers that were extremely high, but we went with one that was willing to waive their appraisal, uh, waive inspections, and do these things that set our sellers up for a much better position than somebody who just offered us the highest dollar amount when the home still needs to appraise. So there is still negotiating that needs to be done on the seller side of things. Um, so make sure that your agent is working for you in that regard. And that's my predictions for 2021 and kind of a recap of the year. So if there's anything that I can do for you, any questions that I can answer, any questions that this video has uh, uh, made you think of, definitely let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much. And we look forward to continuing to support you in your real estate needs and hopefully giving you good advice.